Welcome back, everyone. Dan Vega here, Spring Developer Advocate at Broadcom. Today, we're going to be talking about adding Tailwind CSS to your Spring Boot and Timeleaf projects. Now, it's not Timeleaf specific. You could probably use any template engine. I just happen to be using Timeleaf in this one. But uh, the question came up. I do a lot. I've done a lot of videos on adding Timeleaf into just kind of add some styles to the front end. And I've always just dropped a CDN in there. And you can do that. You know, there's a CDN. You can just add a script tag. And this is great for getting up and running, prototyping, just playing around with it. But very bad for going to production because what happens is you include all of the utility classes from Tailwind. And so you have this huge CSS file, which you don't want to use. You really only want uh, the classes that you end up using. And that's where a build process comes in. It allows us to say, here are all the utility classes I've declared. Just include those in the CSS file that we're going to actually ship to production. So we're going to have some fun with this. I have a repo here called Spring Boot Tailwind. I'll leave a link to this in the description below. This has all the instructions that we're going to go through today. So if we talk about um, how you can use it, how to get started, uh, we want to get started by checking uh, Node and NPM, make sure we have those installed. We'll create a new project uh, using Spring Web, Timeleaf, and the Spring Boot Dev Tools. The Dev Tools are important uh, because we don't want to cache any of those templates, and that automatically sets that caching to false. So include that. Um, and then we'll go through and do each of these steps together. So I'm not going to go through this now because we're going to go through it uh, in the tutorial. If you want to learn more about Tailwind CSS and you're not familiar with it, uh, Tailwind seems to be either you really love it or you really hate it. And I'm not, we're not going to argue that today. Um, you can give it a try and, and kind of see for yourself. I think the one of the things I always tell people is if you just look at the code and go, oh my gosh, I'm not used to writing that. That looks really ugly. And that might be the case, uh, I think. But once you start using it, um, I really kind of fell in love with it. So Tailwind CSS, check it out if you want to find out more about it. But today, we're going to create a new project. So we're going to come in here at start.spring.io. We're going to pick Java, Maven, the latest version of Spring Boot. We're going to say dev.danvega. We'll call this Spring Boot Tailwind. Um, we'll choose Java 22. You can choose whatever. And then we'll just add those dependencies. So I'm going to add web. I'm going to add time leave. And I'm going to add the dev tools. And that's really all we need. From there, we can go ahead and generate a new project that will download a zip for you. You can go ahead and open this up in whatever text editor or IDE you're most productive in. For me, that's going to be IntelliJ Ultimate Edition. I'm a big fan of that IDE. But again, uh, use whatever you feel like using. With that, let's go ahead and write some code. All right, so I have my application open. I'm going to go pop open a terminal real quick. I mentioned this earlier, and this is in the instructions, but you want to make sure you have Node and NPM installed. You can say Node-V. That is the version I'm running, npm-v, that's the version of npm. Now you can install these uh, through Node's website, or you can use something like NVM, which is the Node version manager. Similar to something like SDKman, I would go ahead and suggest using that. Once we know we have those installed, we can kind of get started here. So I have my main application class. I don't need that right now. What I want to do is create a new, and actually I'm going to refactor this. That looks a little better. OK, so um, the first thing that we want to do is in source main, we want to create a new folder called front end. So let's go back to our terminal here. We'll say make dir source main front end. And now we can cd into that source main front end. And now that we're in there, we basically want to set up an npm project. And we can do so by using npm init. This is going to ask you a bunch of questions. I'm just going to kind of answer these. I don't really care about them right now. Um, yep, this is fine. Keywords, author, Dan Vega. Sure, everything looks OK. Now we end up with a front end folder and a package.json. Now we have an NPM project. We can start to install dependencies. So back in the terminal, I'm going to say, and again, this is in the document. I'm going to say npm install dash D. This is a de development dependency. Uh, Tailwind CSS. So that's going to install that. And then what we can do is use something called npx. 
Uh, so we don't have the Tailwind CSS CLI installed, but we can use it using NPX. And we can say tail, Tailwind uh, CSS init, and this is going to create a config file. So we see this config file that's created there, and we get this nice config. So we're only going to change this one line here. We're gonna, I'm going to grab this from the README, and we're just basically telling it where the content is. Like, what are we looking at? as far as uh, templates. So in our case, our templates are stored in source main resources templates. And so we're saying, hey, any HTML or JavaScript there, that is what we want to look at. Cool. Um, so now that that's there, one thing I'm going to do, uh, do we have a git init? Let's say create git repository. Sure. And what I want to do is actually add this node modules to the git ignore. I want to make sure we don't forget this because uh, we don't want to go ahead and add that. So we just added the, where is this? Yeah, so source main front end node modules. So I'll say front end, and that's where that can go. Cool. All right, so far so good. The next thing we need to do in our front end folder is create a new file. I'll call this styles. Um, I styles.css, right? Cool. And we're just going to add uh, the three Tailwind directives here. Uh, this is what imports all the styles. And now that that's in place, we need a way to basically build the output. So again, we're using uh, a build process here to say, hey, look at all the templates that I'm using based on this config. So right now we have no templates in there. And what I want you to do is I want you to build a final CSS file that we can go ahead and ship to production based on the templates that I'm using. So I'm going to use, um, uh, I'm going to add two scripts to our package.json and we'll use them both and I'll kind of explain why, why they're there. So if we run npm run build right now, we'll basically look at this styles folder and say, I want to create an output, which is main.css in my resources static folder. So if I do that now, it's just gonna include uh, the base stuff, nothing that we actually used, but we can still test it out. So if we go, uh, we are in the front end folder, if we say npm run build, this will output it. And if we look in static now, we now have a main CSS. And this is kind of the stock CSS that comes with it, but nothing that we're using in any of our templates because we haven't done that yet. So really what we wanna do now is uh, create a template to kind of use some of that styling. So let's go over here, close this. I'm gonna shrink this a little. And what I'm gonna do is go in templates and go create a new file called index.html. And then I will grab the uh, HTML from the README, paste this in, and this is going to be a time leaf template. Uh, it includes this link. All this is saying is, hey, go and include the main.css. This is from the static folder. This is actually the uh, to the root of that. And this is because uh, underneath the hood, there's a configuration for where static content is. This can always be changed later, but this is the this is the path to that now. Then what we do is we include uh, a body tag here with a class of BG slate 50. So it's gonna give it like a light gray background. We include a header element uh, that includes a background of white container and then MX auto. So this is saying, hey, I want this to be a container which is um, so many pixels wide. You can kind of look at what it is. So container width is 100%. And then based on some media, it'll be a certain pixel amount wide. And MX Auto is just going to put padding on the left and the right. Then we use an H1 tag and we say we want this to be large text and we want it to be bold and we want some padding around it. So now what we can do, instead of building this every time, because if we, if we went in and, 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 and ran that again, that npm run build, this would work. It would output the correct styles to main.css, but then we'd have to do that every single time. So that is what that other script in there is for, is the watch. So it will continuously watch templates, and as things change, it will build a new output file. So we can say npm, oops, npm run watch, 
And now we have that main.css already there, but if I went and changed something, uh, it would go ahead and reflect that. So now the last thing I need to kind of test this out to see if this works is a controller. So I'll just create something called a home controller. And in here, this is going to be a controller and we need uh, something for that root. So we'll say get mapping is here and this is going to be public string home and it's just gonna return that index.html. So I'm gonna say return index. And now when we go to the root, it should say to timeleaf, hey, this is the template that I wanna use. So if we go ahead and test this out, let's say run this application. Uh, yes, we just refactored some things, that's okay. Okay, now we should be able to go over to the browser and go to localhost 8080, and there is our page. So we have this slight uh, BG of slate 50, so it's a little bit of a gray tint, and then we have this header that has some padding on the left and the right, and so everything is looking good. Now, this is great for development, but we know that in here we are watching this file for changes, uh, what if we didn't do this and what happens if we ship this main.css to production that doesn't have the styles that we need in it? So again, this is great for development, but we need a process for production. And so what we're going to do is we're going to add in a Maven plugin. Again, uh, all of this is in the readme. Um, Basically, if we're gonna move this to production, we need to make sure that we automate this process. Like we need to make sure NPM and Node are installed. We need to run NPM install because what happens when we go to production? Remember, we get ignored Node modules. That is not installed. Uh, so it needs to be there at some point. Um, and for that, there is a really good plugin called the Front End Maven plugin. And so we're going to add that to this now, in the README, I said we have to add a couple of properties. This is going to declare what versions of Node and NPM you're using. We saw which ones I was using earlier. You would just kind of input whatever you're using there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add this plugin and a few executions and configurations that we'll kind of walk through. So we come down here. And again, this is all, I'm pulling this directly from the um, README for the front end Maven plugin. Uh, and I just kind of went through and uh, followed their instructions for this. So we have this front end Maven plugin. Uh, let's go ahead and save and reload that. We have a couple executions here. One, we need to install Node and NPM if it's not installed. Uh, here are the versions that we care about. Again, we want to be specific because what you are using on your machine and what I'm using on my machine might be different, right? We want to run npm install. This is going to uh, do that and install like the node modules. And then finally, we want to run that script that we created in our package.json called npm build. Uh, this is npm run build. And that will basically take all the styles that we're using and create that new main CSS. And then there's just some configuration here. What node version are we using? What is the working directory? Because it is not in the same directory as the palm.xml. This is in source main front end. And then the other one is this install directory. If you don't do this, it'll install a node folder in the front end. I'm saying, hey, just go ahead and, and use that in the um, target folder. So with this saved, what I wanna do is I wanna go over to um, our resources, our templates, and let's just change this to something like BG Blue 500. Now, if I were to just run this application, it wouldn't be 500, right? Because we know that we need this build process to uh, output the correct CSS for this. So what I wanna do is what I'm, I'm gonna run uh, Maven Clean Package and uh, let's see, oh, well, it was watching, so maybe it would have been there, but uh, in production it would have been. So Maven wrapper, we're gonna run clean package. Uh, nope, we wanna back up. All right, so now we can run Maven clean package. 
And this will go through and build us an artifact. It's going to build us a jar file. Part of this process now is going to be to uh, install node npm, run npm install, which you see is happening right there. And then it's going to run uh, npm run build, which is going to allow us to uh, output that CSS file. So when we're done, now what we can do is run java-jar target, and then I think it's Spring Boot Tailwind, yep. So if we run that, and now we go back to localhost 8080, and refresh this, you see that we have that blue background. So we know that those styles have uh, gotten updated in the final static CSS file. Uh, main.css file that we're going to ship to production. So cool. So uh, again, um, you can come in here and go into your index.html. Uh, index you can add a CDN file for Tailwind CSS. This is good for just getting started, for just prototyping, but eventually if this is something we're going to take to production, we don't want to ship that entire CSS file. Uh, so that is why I kind of put this together. And everything we went through is here in this readme right here. Uh, so go ahead and check it out. Friends, you know what time it is. If you found value in this, do me a big favor. Leave me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. And as always, happy coding.